Welcome to the second episode of the Ask j &E Show and today we have a question from one of our followers is how much do you actually need for your purchase for your first private property in Singapore? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, so for the past few weeks uh, and also the past few days through our Zoom consultations during this lockdown, I have uh, encountered this question and also thank you for the follower who have asked this question as to how much do you need to purchase, uh, how much do you need in order to purchase your first private property. I know there are a lot of young couples out there who is asking should I consider a BTO or EC or private property and today's session I'm going to share with you how much you actually need for your first private property purchase. Okay, so assuming today let's say you want to purchase your first private property and assuming that you are in eligible to take up the maximum loan or 75% loan to value ratio, uh, the first thing that you're going to take note of is that you will need a 25% down payment and on top of that, you have to add in some costs for the taxes to the government, we call it the buyer stamp duty, the BSD, that ranges from 3 to 4% depending on the quantum of the property. Okay, so what quantum are we talking about? If your property is above 1 million, okay, 1 million and above, you have to pay 4% buyer stamp duty minus $15,400. This is the equation. Don't ask me why this is from the government, from IRAS. And anything that is below 1 million, you have to pay 3% buyer stamp duty minus $5,400. So these are the few equations that you take note of, okay? So there's different types of private properties. Firstly, we have the resale property. Secondly, we have the new launches. Okay, for resale properties, the timeline is as such. The moment you put in the option of a property, you have to pay roughly about 1%. It's negotiable, but 1%. And exercising the property, you have to pay a subsequent 4%. After that, you have to pay a buy stamp duty of 3 to 4% depending on your purchase. And during the completion, that happens maybe 12 or 16 weeks uh, after your exercise, you have to pay 20%. So total down payment is 25% plus 3 to 4% depending on the quantum, which is the price of the property. If you're entering a new launch, firstly, the option fee is around 5%. It depends, it varies for new launches, but the standard market rate is about 5%. Next, during your exercise, uh, that happens about 3 weeks later, it's about 15%. After that, you have to pay a buy stamp duty of 3 to 4%. And when the foundation of the property is built, you have to pay the remaining 5%. Okay, so let's take a case study today, shall we? Okay, so assuming today, let's say you are purchasing a $1 million private condominium or resale condominium, you will need 5% cash. Okay, whether it's a new launch or the 1% or 4% option exercise fee for a resale, you need 5% cash. And that amounts to $50,000, okay? assuming the remaining 20%, okay? For new launches will be the 15% during exercise and 5% during the completion of the foundation, you have to pay 20%. For resale is during the completion appointment at the law firm, you pay the remaining 20%. This can be cash or CPF. So for a $1 million property, that will be $200,000, okay? And let's say this is a $1 million property. You have to pay buyer stamp duty of 4% minus $15,400 and that is $24,600, okay? So, in actual fact, total down payment you need is roughly around $274,600 for your down payment. So if you want to purchase your first property, you have to have to set aside 5% cash means minimally $50,000 in cash and the remaining can be cash or CPF and that will be around $280,000. So if you have crossed the first barrier, the first hurdle, which is around $280,000, that is when you are eligible to purchase a private property. And for $1 million private property, your combined income, assuming if you are employed personnel, is $5,620, uh, $5, sorry. So this is assuming, let's say, a husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, if you want to buy a property together, you will have to have a combined income of $5,620, which is not too hard because a combined each person on average is about $2,500 to $3,000, okay? But let's say if you are self-employed, what will happen is that the bank will take a haircut of 30% of your income, so they only take into account 70% of your income to take the loan, and that will be around $8,000, okay? So first barrier is your down payment, second barrier is your income. Okay, so to summarize again, the total amount you need, the down payment for your first property, not second, because second property, your loan will change, the amount that you can loan will change, but assuming you can take 75% loan, the down payment will be about 25% plus about 4%, so about 30% in terms of down payment. So $1 million property will be about 280K, and that's assuming you meet the minimum income threshold of around 5,600 for uh, employed personnel, self-employed is about 8K, okay? But do take note, you also have to account for your legal fees of around $3,000 as well. Yeah.
Okay, so if you are looking to purchase your first private property, a lot of young couples they cannot clear the first barrier. Some of them, what they do is that maybe they will ask from their family, their parents first, or they will just hustle hard, work hard, and earn the money before purchasing their first private property. Okay, your loan will actually decrease as your age increases. The total maximum number of years you can take for a loan is 30 years up to 65 years old. So the moment you cross 35 years old, then your number of years that you can take for your loan will decrease, right? 35, you still can take 30 years loan. The moment you are 36, you can reach 29 years old. So let's say your question for me is, so let's say if I have two individuals of different age, so the bank will do this thing called the income weighted average age where they'll take the average and they will also give you a loan according to that. If you have any questions, remember, give a banker a call or just give us at JNA Real Estate a call some of your consultants to advise you even better okay so I hope that in this video you already know what exactly is how much you need for a first private property purchase what is the income you need as well okay so thank you so much for watching the second episode of the Ask JNA series and if you have any more questions just drop us some comments give us an insta DM and we are very very sure that we're going to answer all the questions you have about real estate investments if you love this video give us a like subscribe to our channel share with your friends who have these questions as well thank you so much for watching and stay tuned to the third episode of Ask JNA Show.